this video, I'm going to be breaking down one of the best passing plays in Madden 24, why it is one of the best passing plays, and what you can do to incorporate this passing concept into your offense, whether you run the Colts playbook or not. The passing play we're going to be taking a look at today is the play Dagger. This is in the Colts playbook. If you guys want to get my entire Colts offensive ebook, that's going to be linked in the description. You can get access to all of my ebooks by being a Patreon member. It's only $10, and I guarantee you it's going to make you a better Madden player. We break down everything you need to know to become a really, really good player in this game. So we're going to be going over Dagger, and the reason why we're using this play is because it's going to illustrate a bigger concept that will cross-apply to any formation you run in any year of Madden and is what makes this a very powerful play. All right, so the setup for this play is we're just going to put the slot receiver on a slot apprentice crossing route or a slot apprentice post. In general, though, you probably want a slot apprentice crossing route. Now, this is going to basically equate out to what I call a Y cross style passing concept. The reason why is because if you look at this circle receiver, he's on this drag route. Um, this drag route is really going to attack, if you look here, it's going to attack this left side flat, right? So it's going to obviously attack the quick middle, but it will also ultimately will end up attacking that left side flat. So the cool part about this route combination in general, and I'm going to talk about how to make it a little better in a minute. The cool part about this route combination is you have a high low on the left side. You have your, your clear out streak, which is always a peak read. You're running off space, you're clearing space. And then you have your slot receiver on the crossing route, which is your high read. You have your alternate receiver, which is going to be your little drag route underneath. And then you have a backside receiver, which is going to be this tight end little kind of inverted in route. So your first read is always this little peak throw right here. And it's a really good one this year. This route, because the meta meta is mainly zone this year, this is one of the best ways to beat it because you have to have a hook curl from the safety to be able to defend this. So you have to have a hook curl to be able to defend this. Oftentimes people are sending this four man blitz at you. And a lot of times they'll even send a five man pressure. If they send the five man pressure, the cool part is this is where this uh, drag route becomes super, uh, super handy. What you'll see here is this drag route will get open over on that left hand side of the field. And I didn't set up a good pass pro, but in general, let me try to show this to you again. So they put this guy in the yellow, and then, like I said, they're going to put this guy, a lot of times people blitz these guys, right? So if they are going to blitz you, it makes it fairly simple because all you have to do is just hit your little drag once he clears that yellow and becomes basically a flat route, as you see. So the cool part is, as I said, this is just a true left side flood. So what do they have to do to stop that? Well, they have to have a hard flat. They have to have a hook curl to stop the seam streak. And then now they're left to only send four. Well, the other cool part about this play is your crossing route is going to get, that's crazy that that's actually coming in out of cover four drop contained. I think it's because I'm actually setting up pass pro and they're not actually running the A-gap blitz. So we'll, we'll actually not set up pass pro here. But in general, if you just watch how this play works out, you're going to see that this crossing route is going to be a nice deep read right on the sideline. Now, everything that I've tested about this crossing route in terms of how to throw this, I do think it's important to just mention this to you guys. I feel like when you freeform this crosser this year, it's really kind of, um, at least in my opinion, I just think it's a hard freeform. So what I like to do is just classic pass it um, on the on the left side. So I'm still going to pass lead it, but I'm just not freeforming it. So what you'll see here is I'm not holding left trigger. So when I throw this, I'm going to throw it right there, down and away. And I think it's just because it's a hard free form. And ultimately, if you if you do free form, and I find I throw it out of bounds a lot. Okay. So how do they stop that route to the crosser? Well, really, the only true method to stop it, if you can throw it on the sideline like that, is they're going to have to use or defend that. So if they use or defend the crosser, and let's say they blitz this guy, and they have this guy in a yellow and a third like this, this is kind of their setup, if they go with the crosser, this tight end route is going to be timed up and throw right here before he gets to that KO. It is important that you throw it before he gets to that KO. Okay. But in general, this is kind of the standard way that people are going to cover you out of this formation. If they're in baseline press dollar, it's a little easier if there's no blitz threat, but in general, 
you know, we want to throw this kind of right in here. That's perfect. And as you see, it kind of just sits in the soft spot of the defense. Now, uh, really, and, and again, the best way to cover this is actually to go ahead and go into your zone drops. And we'll show this real quick. So to go to your zone drops, you're going to have to do a 30 and 5, okay? A 30 and 5 or a double Mabel uh, coverage. Probably the best way to, uh, to, to try to stop this play. So if they do that, this is important. If they do that, oftentimes, this is, this, like I said, we know this guy blitzes a lot, right? So let's say they run a 30 and 5. Well, what's our first read on the play? Our first read is a snap throw streak. If that linebacker blitzes, that's an inside pass lead. And most of the time, that's a completion, all right? You would possession catch that, and you would get down, and so it makes it hard. So now, what do they have to do to stop that? They have to have a yellow zone over there, right? So now, we're in a maximum drop eight coverage situation, all to try to stop this play. And I would say it's still kind of hard to stop it because you can kind of throw this you know, kind of right in, in between these KOs as well. Like it's just a, it's a hard play to stop and to stop it. They have to do a lot of stuff specifically to stop it. The cool part about that for us offensively is it's going to then open up all kinds of other stuff. So, and I would say sometimes this guy doesn't even guard it. Okay. It kind of depends a little bit, but you know, if they are able to, ultimately, if they are able to guard this play, then we can just check down to something else, of course. So, you know, I wouldn't, you know, this is just a simple throwaway if we if we can't hit it. A lot of times I would say this crosser has a chance uh, to get over 30s if you run it on the other hash mark. But as you see there, I mean, in general, it's pretty good. Now, the one other thing I will say, and this is um, more of a regs throw, but if they don't have a, if they don't have KOs, one thing you can try to do is you can try to throw this fade with a free form up into the left. So you see here, free form up into the left, and you see how it's going to put it right over the top of the defender. So again, if they don't have KOs, that's a potential option as well. Now, another thing that I like to do, and I just want to just quickly point out, if they start doing a lot of double Mabel coverage, right, another thing that you can do here, kind of the same concept, same read, same everything, is instead of using a deep crosser, Let's use a slant route. And what you'll see is this slant route when he runs, and as long as he doesn't do that, which is why you don't run slants, but when he runs, a lot of times he's going to get kind of in that really soft spot against the defense as well over there on that left side. Now, again, this is why you don't run slants a lot. And if they're showing this right here, then you might go away from this play, right? Also, you do know that you're not getting pressured because they're, they have to have that yellow zone there. So you could do some very simple, you know, backside stuff as well. So I wouldn't, you know, this is the, probably the best way for them to defend it. But ultimately, you know, like one thing, for example, that you could do here, let me reset this play, is you can post this guy and try that. Sometimes this post can get underneath a 30. So you see, just wait on it. You want to throw it right there and you've got to ag back to the ball. You could try that as well. So... Those are a couple ways that you could run it. Now, if you wanted the spacing to work a little bit more out of this, uh, just in terms of how they could potentially, you know, defend you with the different ways, what what you could also do is you could drag your slot and cross through your outside bunch receiver. The only reason I'm saying that is I just think it, it improves the bumping. It improves kind of just the general symmetry of the play. It does take longer ultimately to throw it, but I think it spaces out a little bit better when you drag your if you have a hot route master quarterback and you do it like this i do think it ultimately is going to turn out better for you and the cool part again is we still force them into this double mabel coverage and you see here this crosser and again that crosser not quite able to get over the 30 unfortunately but in general i will say if they if we're forcing them and it has to be the thing about that 30 is it pretty much has to be from that receiver then it obviously opens up other stuff in our offense but in general this is one of my favorite ways uh, to be able to attack out of the y cross concept now how could we run this out of let's say trips tight end for example well here's what we're going to do we're going to call this play pa crossers we're going to streak we probably want to want to be to the wide side but we're going to streak our tight end as a clear out route we're going to drag our inside trips receiver and then we're going to backside in route this backside. So you see, it's basically the same thing. You have that quick flat, you have that deep crosser, you know, and then you have your, um, and then you have your kind of your check down route. 
Now, I would say in trips in general, I feel like a, really the best way to do this, though, would actually be to do something like this. I think this is a great, great, great combo. And the reason why is just because it really spaces out well. So that zig becomes kind of your drag, your tight end crosser becomes your uh, slot crosser. And then that backside post becomes, you know, obviously the backside in route. So that's how you can kind of cross apply this to other formations. But thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed this. This has been the, the dagger play out a bunch nasty. If you guys want to get my entire Colts offensive ebook or any of my ebooks, just become a Patreon member. It's only $10. It'll get you access to all of my stuff. And I guarantee it's going to make you a better Madden player. You can sign up by heading down to the description and clicking the link down below.